All right, this one's going to be for Apple Time Capsule user again. Uh, in the past, we solved this issue, but uh, with the newest Linux kernel, they got rid of some features, mainly for security issues, and um, we can't not access it anymore uh, using the old method. I actually like the old method better because it's way more stable than this one. However, uh, you know, if you're on the name, you know, on the newest uh, Linux kernel, this is probably the only way you can do it. And so this is how you mount stuff on Linux here, right? Now, if you know what an Apple Time Capsule is, uh, do a little preview of this or a little refresher. Uh, it is a router slash a way to share files because it has a hard drive in this uh, thing here. So this old model here, uh, you probably don't want to use it as a router anymore because it's really old and, you know, we still want to use it as a file sharing mechanism because it's still useful and it's still reliable. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to mount it using this package called AFPFS-NG. It should be in your repositories uh, on any distribution because I think it's popular now. Anyways, uh, we're going to still do the same thing that we did two or three years ago with our script. I uh, update the script to uh, use this package here. So I'll show you a little demo of it here. So in here, this is just called app, what was that? Time Capsule AFP Handler here. Uh, the only thing you need to change in here is real simple. Your, you know, anything in this section here, right? What we got in here? So we got the IP, you got the nickname and your partition name and then your user and password so this one is mainly for people that have an account set up on their Apple um, time capsule so you need to have your IP of your device if you don't know what it is either you can bust out your airport utils and check it otherwise if you're on Linux already then you can use uh, nmap to scan for it so you know, if your router starts with 192.168.1, then you use that. If it starts with 192.168.0, use that. So let me show you how it looks like when we're scanning this here, All right? Using nmap. Uh, type in our password because we want to scan. So this one will scan like, um, you know, IPs that's connected to your router. Um, And I'll give you a list here. So you can see all my stuff here. What do I got in here? I got my phone. I got my Amazon sticks. <clears throat> got three of them. And um, what was that? My two uh, HP uh, servers. My NVIDIA Shield. And these are my Apple, right? My Apple stuff here. Uh, I got four of these uh, time capsule because it was cheap and I pick them up, right? But you can see I can connect to uh, this one here, 121, 123, 124, 125. Uh, I can connect to any of those, uh, you know, devices that have my Apple time capsule here. So uh, that's what you got to do in here, you know, putting the correct IP, right? Give it a nickname, any name you want. We'll keep it to one word. We don't know spaces or anything. No, no weird symbols, just regular, you know, alphabetical letters. Um, so give it a name, like, you know, this is my movies, this is my music, my pictures, whatever it is you have in there, All right? So you can remember what it is when you're mounting it. And this is, uh, your partition name. Usually it's called data, but if you ever changed it when you were setting it up, so when you set it up, you know, this is in your disk, um, whatever the name of this thing is. Uh, like I said, 99% of the time people don't change it. They just call it data. But if you did change it, Make sure it reflects that on the script, right? Same thing with accounts. Uh, if you have like an admin account or something like that, then, um, you know, you want to, you know, uh, remember what it was. So this one was a visitor and, you know, the password of it. This one's like God mode, AKA your, um, your admin, you know, account. And this one has a read and write. Usually that's the one you want to mount, right? Uh, so that's it. That's how you would find out if uh, you forgot your username and password. Just um, bust out your airport utils to, um, you know, uh, remember what it was. And that's how you got to change in this portion. And when you mount it, real simple, 
Uh, I already have mine set up with all these other ones here, so. But uh, this is how it looks like when you're mounting it here. What do we got? We got movies. These are my legit movies, of course. You know, all legit. <clears throat> so it's mounting uh, the data partition and also um, the account name. So this one is God Mode. If yours was like another username, then it will be a different username. But the data is like um, kind of like a shared between all the users. So anyone can dump it in there and, um, you know, have access to it. Right. But this one is always going to be private because uh, whoever the user is, they're the only one that can own uh, this uh, or they can only um, access this folder because they have the password to it. Right. But the data one here is kind of like a public folder. So anyone can dump it in here and anyone can see it. Right. So that's that. If you want to keep it private, you want to keep it in your, you know, your username um, folder only, right? Anyways, that's how you amount stuff and, um, you know, um, drag and drop or not drag and drop because we're doing the terminal. But, you know, copy your files in here and you have access to it, right? If I want to mount in another one, let's say I'm mounting my TV shows. And we can mount another one, right? Um... So you can see it has different IPs and stuff like that and uh, different nicknames. So the first one is called Movies. The second one is called TV1. Stuff like that so I can remember what it was, right? So when you're mounting it, you can see that they give you a little message. You know, data you know, is mounted on this path here. So that's all you got to do, right? Anyways, that's how I access my stuff. Um, this one is not as reliable as the other one. Like I said, uh, the old one was like way better because it was using like Samba. This one is just like, you know, their own like Apple file protocol. So it's not very stable. And uh, if you ever want to unmount it, just run the script again. Right, and unmount it. And what I seen like it's not uh, stable is that when you see when I just unmounted, it messes up my other mount uh, up here. So I can't really access it anymore either. So that's the... Um, the thing I don't like about this one, um, if you unmount one, it might affect the other one, and it's really annoying. So if you're gonna use this and you have multiple devices of the same thing, like I do, you might have an issue. But most people just have one only, so you might not have uh, the same issues as me when it comes to this. All right. Anyways, that's how you would do that. Uh, you know, with the script, real simple. Just edit those. Uh, what was that? five things really if you want to set up yours like mine with an account then i have like you know pictures in here uh if you want to look at it so i open these pictures already don't i yeah so this is it you have to use airport uh, it's airport utils either on your mac or on windows they have like airport utils i don't think they have them on linux or, or it's really old and it's not compatible anymore i think that used to be a java program but it don't work, you know, on modern stuff anymore. But this is how you don't have to do this one time. So it's not like a real pain to go back and do it. Just do it one time and you never have to uh, interact with, you know, this setup again. Right. So you do this one time. Uh, make sure it's all green when you set this up. And that's how you know it's all good. Right. And uh, what is the next one here? If you want to find out your IP using this utils instead of using Nmap like we did. Right, we use Nmap. Um, what was that one here? All right, we use Nmap in here to find out. But if you want to use Airport Utils to find out, then you always just right click on whatever it is and it'll show your IP. Right. Uh, as far as this one, like I said, we're not using it as a router, so it really doesn't matter whatever you put in here. Like the base station, you can give it a name. So this name will actually uh, actually show up, you know, if you, um, what do we do? We mount stuff, right? Yeah, this is the name that uh, will show up in here. So, for example, when you mount it, it will say, uh, you know, TC2TB, whatever it is. Uh, you gave it a name in there, and that should be the not name there. Um, give it a password. You probably don't even need to remember this password anymore because uh, we're not going to use it again. But that's the password. 
uh, internet stuff, DHCP, blah, blah, blah. You can see in the pictures. This one in here, we're not enabling uh, IPv6 or anything like that, so we're not enabling any of that. Uh, wireless, like I said, we're not using as a router, so we just turn it off. All right. Network, we're using this bridge mode, we're not using it as a router or anything like that, right? Uh, the disk stuff, we'll go over it again, but uh, if you have a different name, usually it's not the case. 99% of the time, it's just called data unless you changed it. And we want to do enable file sharing. So check the box. We want to do uh, with accounts. And we're going to add a new account we're using this plus sign here. And um, if you want to do like a visitor user, um, this is usually what I use for uh, the visitor and the read only, right? And this is how I set up my um, my time capsule so I can watch movies. And mainly this is what I use it for, just watching movies. Uh, on my either Fire Stick, my Nvidia Shield, my phone, my Android tablet or something like that. I just install VLC on it and I uh, use VLC and I connect to this visitor thing. Because uh, uh, this one can only read. It cannot write or anything. right? It cannot delete. It cannot write. It cannot do anything. Right? So that's how I connect to uh, this thing using just the visitor for my VLC and anything in my um, data usually just, you know, media files, then I can access it uh, using VLC and I can watch movies that way and it's read only. So they cannot delete or anything like that. So that's why I set up as a visitor as read only. Right. And God mode here. This is like my admin. So this is when I need to put new files in there. Right, new shows, new movies. I use this and it has read and write, and I do that on my Linux machine and I mount it and I just dump it in there and I watch it on my, uh, you know, my, my different devices, right? And uh, that's mainly what I do, right? Uh, just get one of these devices. I like this better than, uh, you know, Raspberry Pis or something like that because if you add it all up, Raspberry Pis, you have to add, you know, buy in the Raspberry Pi, buy a hard drive. You might have to buy a case to make it look nice. Otherwise, you have a bunch of wires dangling around. It looks ugly as hell. I, that's why I don't use a Raspberry Pi um, to do this. Plus, this thing is usually, depending where you live, depending who sells it locally, it's like 20 bucks, And it usually comes with a hard drive inside it, right? Because not a lot of people don't know how to open this. But it's really simple to open this. Uh, just using a hair dryer. You can go on YouTube and I'll show you how to do it here. But uh, you can put a, uh, or it comes with a hard drive. Usually it's one terabyte, two terabyte, three terabyte. If you can get one of those, then uh, you're good. You can fit a lot of movies with just, you know, one or two terabytes. Uh, if you keep it to like, uh, I usually keep mine to 720p and maybe, you know, 1080p. But 720p is good enough for me. Uh, some people would recommend using Plex, NB, Jellyfin, and stuff like that. I don't do any of that stupid stuff, right? I use it low-tech, just using this thing. Uh, you c Obviously, you cannot do transcoding this because it's, it's not powerful to do that. But I don't do any of that transcoding crap either. Uh, this thing, if you keep it like just low-tech, you know, maybe like, uh, uh, what's that? X264 or X265, if you want to save way more space, you can stream this over your uh, Wi-Fi or even like you know just straight up Ethernet no issues like no buffering nothing like that that's why I like this thing very reliable that's why I got four of them it's cheap too like I said yeah usually it's around 20 or 30 bucks all right if you can get one of these ones specifically this old model the newer model looks harder to open I saw some YouTube videos and uh, the vertical one it looks harder to open this thing I know is easy because I opened a few of them already all right uh, so that's it for uh, how you would set up, uh, you know, the script to mount and unmount stuff like that. Uh, if you know of a better way to do this, let me know, like a really reliable way, like the old way. And then uh, let me know. Other than that, that will be it for this video. Uh, if you want the script, it should be in the description. That will be it for this one.